The April tier shifts are here. No, this is not an April Fool's video. Marty doesn't mess with that. Neither do I really, so. <laughs> Today we're going to go over the indie related tier shifts. And something very funny happened. We got like nothing. <laughs> So y'all may be wondering, is this going to be a short video? Am I just going to talk about these three changes? No, of course not. I'm going to talk about all of these PU drops, baby. Let's go. I'm going to give you a reason, basically, just why they dropped. Some of their mons will have a little bit more at-length discussion, of course, because some of them are like, oh, well, this mon's bad now for X, Y, and Z. Some of them will be me saying, I don't know why it dropped. So there you go. Of course, you're about to join the content as of late. Make sure that you do subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I want to hit 10k by the end of the year. I know y'all like competitive Pokemon, so hey, you already stuck around for a minute. May as well subscribe and don't miss a future upload. If you already are subscribed, make sure that you've left a like. Very easy. Very, very easy. Shout out Sonic Generation Crisis City Remix. Anyhow, as per usual, we're going to start off with the NU shifts up here. And I will give you just a very funny little thing here. I don't know why this mon's an RU now, but... Is what it is. Have fun with Scarf Ironhead. Anyhow, of course, got a couple mons going up to RU. This just means Armorouge and Necrozma can't be resuspected until they fall back into NUBL. Odds were we were not gonna touch these. Necrozma was pretty convincingly. It was like 10 to 2, but still, Necrozma didn't really have any support for an even eventual retest, and neither did Armorouge. So both of them will, you know, they'll probably just be in UBL at minimum for the rest of the gen. Chansey Rising, I'm not going to say it kills Stall, because I just doubt that it does, though it is a large hit to Stall. Chansey was not only a good status absorber, but it was also the Cleric. I don't know if it's the only Cleric, I, I'm struggling to remember what mods even have access to those moves anymore, but it was the Cleric of choice for Stall. Status now is significantly more obnoxious for the build to face, and for those that aren't aware, Stall was actually in a really strong spot this past month. So... This probably will see it fall off really significantly, but wait and see. Overquill rises back up to RU as well, presumably for a roll on rain. Overquill wasn't getting a ton of use anymore, and it honestly wouldn't have shocked me if it was going to drop. Let me actually see. I want to test this. Also, um, keep in mind Gyarados got banned earlier this month. Still 11th in usage. Yeah. Where was it? Overquill? Okay, Overquill would have stayed in you, but as y'all see, its usage was kind of starting to win dwindle. So there you go. But really all I saw it for in the recent weeks was on Hyper Offense. Overquill was actually pretty decent. Gave you priority, gave you some really useful defensive typing stuff, just in terms of immunities. T-Spike Absorb is also, of course, really nice to have. T-Spikes aren't like death to HO because you're typically just trying to win faster than your opponent anyway, and T-Spikes don't necessarily play into that, but as you all saw with the video I did yesterday, that was an HO team that didn't really like T-Spikes, and I had to, you know, <laughs> accommodate in certain areas, so here's that. Um, utility sets really haven't seen much use in a long time. Alolan Muck is generally just viewed as better if you want a bulky dark type, so that, that kind of took a lot of this wind out of overcool sails down here anyhow. And then we get Feraligator. Um, <laughs> there were a couple mons that people were speculating could drop. I think, like, Breloom was one of them. Crawdont was one of them. Chestnut might have been one of them. Fortress was one of them. And we only end up getting Gator. This mon's going to be very interesting because a lot of people are going to compare it to Gyarados immediately. The difference, of course, is that Gator learns Sword Stance and is significantly more immediately powerful. You know, you got Sheer Force, Life Orb stuff going on, Liquidation, hitting like a Freight Train. It's got really good coverage as well. And you got Ice Punch for things like Vile Plume and Dragalge, for example. You've got um, Crunch as like a generally good mid-ground option across all of the water types. I mean, saw someone say you could maybe do Trailblaze. And you're not wrong, you could. I just don't know if Trailblaze is going to be worth the move slot. But we'll see. It might actually be just... It might end up just being decent as an option. Whether or not Gator is going to be OP stands or remains to be determined. There's a couple notable differences between it and Gyarados that I think are worth touching on. One of them is defensive utility. Gyarados actually offered a decent amount just through its typing and ability alone. Intimidate, you know, Moxie Gyarados was really, really strong too, but Intimidate was 
about as common, at least in my experience, because it was just nice to have that extra buffer against physical attackers, and it made pivoting around Pokemon like Mian Xiao and even Choice Scarf Flygon a good bit easier. And of course, being a flying type, I mean that you, in reference to those two, you resisted Mian Xiao CC, you were immune to Flygon Quake, it just gave you more opportunities to set up, really. But on the contrary, something that Gator has over Gyarados defensively is you're not weak to a Celerock, and with how good Lycanroc Dusk is, that's a pretty big benefit to it. And generally, you just have fewer weaknesses with for Alligator than you did with Gyarados. At least I think that's true. But now that I say it, I can't think of weaknesses Gyarados has other than Electric and Rock. I feel like there's more and my brain's just not working, but regardless, I mean, one of those is a quad weakness. <laughs> so there you go. I think Gator will pretty easily be one of the best ones in the tier. As y'all saw when I was up here, now... I'll be real. A lot of us thought Galvantula's usage was going to have a top 10. It's not quite there, but it is at rank number 17 out of all the mons. Shouts Noivern being lower than freaking Galvantula. But Gator should enable sticky web teams quite effectively, especially, like I said, the Sword Stance. And a cool little thing, too, is Gator actually has Scale Shot, and you could do SD Scale Shot Gator. I don't know how good it is, mostly because you can't do loaded dice, or maybe you can't. I'm still trying to figure out if you can, because of course Gator wants to run Life Orb with Sheer Force, but on the other side, Loaded Dice gives you so much more reliability with Scale Shot that I don't know if it's still worth running that move. And just as well, to throw in a little bit of t info here, because I'm sure some of y'all will... I already know, there's some people typing down there, oh, Robbie, you can't run Scale Shot with Sheer Force, it doesn't work. No, it does. So the difference is Scale Shot just simply boosts your speed no matter what. It's not a percentage chance. It is, it does this. Compared to Trailblaze, it is a 100% chance, meaning that it is a percentage chance. So Trailblaze won't boost your speed. I know it's weird. Like, what? you know, okay, well, it's 100%, so, you know, what, what's the difference between 100% and, and just simply it raises speed? Well, the difference is Sheer Force <laughs> cares about percentages. So if there's a percent chance of something to happen, even if it's a 100% chance, then Sheer Force will say, okay, you don't get that anymore. Whereas with Scale Shot, it simply raises speed by one stage. Hope that makes sense, but... Yeah, I think Gator will have a lot of options from, you know, your standard Dragon Dance stuff, maybe even just Sword Dance 3 attacks. I saw some people even talking about just using it as, like, a wall breaker and nothing more, not bothering with setup. I think there's probably some merit to that. I just feel like DD is probably still pretty free to get on there. I don't know exactly how much coverage you're going to really need for Gera beyond, not Gera, Gator, beyond Liquidation, Ice Punch, and, and um, probably Crunch, or Trailblaze even, like we said, throw that in there. So, you know, shout out to Acid13, I do want to give you credit, he was talking about Trailblaze, I wasn't too sure, but I looked at the Calc vs Swampert, you damn near one shot it with Trailblaze. Pretty good. <laughs> Anyhow, that's beside the point. Let's get to the drops. So a lot of these mons you're going to recognize as like former titans of the metagame. Some of these mons are just terrible. Others are mons that I honestly wouldn't be shocked if they rose back to NU, but I'm not going to say that they will because I think, just as an aside, we had people from RU talking with like utmost certainty of certain tier shifts once again, only for them not to happen. And I don't blame them because I think there's a point where you just say in your experience, this mod is so common and so good in my experience, this should certainly rise up and then it doesn't happen. It just makes you look a little silly. So that's why I always try when PU players ask me, for example, about what I think will drop. I try to be as conservative with the list as I can because I don't want to give them false hope. But I will admit, I got a lot of this list correct. I was PMing eternally a couple times and there were, this is mostly what I had. Not everything. Um, there were some mods that dropped that I didn't think would work. Or Pom Pom is probably the most significant of them. Um, I think even Toxtricity, I wasn't sold on that dropping. Um, where's like another that I was... Rotom Heat, I didn't think would drop. Glowbro, I honestly kind of thought would stay as well, even with regular Slowbro around. It's I'm just like, hey man, it's Glowbro. Um, I was also fully prepared for Ambipom to stay in you. <laughs> Not that it's particularly good, just that it's Ambipom, and that mod always overstays its welcome in whichever tier it's in. But we can talk about them now. Altaria dropping mostly just because it's a defogger. There's not really any use for it nowadays. There is still a little justification, and I don't know if this is going to happen. Stall's like the one place where I could see Altaria still having a 
roll. Now, this doesn't apply to last month, but without Chansey, yeah, I kind of... Maybe Natural Cure is good enough? You, you got Parish Trap stuff, you got Haze stuff. There's, like, some tangible reason you'd use Altaria, maybe, for Stall still. But for your general builds and in you, the meta hasn't been super kind to overly passive options. Stall's a little different. But, like, Altaria, you typically try and see someone throw on maybe a balance build, and it's just not really worked out. You've seen Noivern, of course, be that similar role. Doesn't absorb status, but it still generally takes the moves you're switching it in on fine enough. Even Talonflame's quasi-relatable there. It's still the fight check of the tier, but these mons are also just a little bit more active in what they do. Mostly Noivern, where you see a lot of offensive EV spreads, even if offensive Noivern is maybe labeled a different set. Utility Noivern still has been running offensive EV, so you get these strong Dracos. Flamethrower can still chip away at steals. It's generally just better than alt. Um, Ambipom drops. This is like one of the few times I don't really have a reason to say other than Ambipom is just not that great. HO is still really good. Like, hyper offense builds are still super common. Maybe not super common, still pretty common. And... Ambipom vibe chips them well. I think the problem for it is a lot of the leads just run Terra Ghost. And then there's nothing you can do about it. Like, even a Sticky Web, for example. Galvantula will just run Terra Ghost. I will Terra versus your Ambipom turn one. You can go for knockoff and predict that. I don't particularly care. I'm getting my Sticky Web up, and I am running you down. It also doesn't help that Lucario is, like, super good right now. I don't... I don't know where it is usage-wise, but it should be pretty high up i would guess uh oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, wait no i definitely missed it though right here it is 14 yeah so it's pretty high up lucario is really nice too for anti ambi pumping because you can't be faked out you also have e-speed which i don't remember if e-speed goes before fake out but regardless of that you can't be faked out <laughs> so it's pretty nice to have a sweeper that's just naturally immune to it we've seen a lot of hasui type as well on these offensive builds it's another mon that Ambipom can't fake out and just cheese. Even Scarf Legion, I've run... Uh, I recorded with the video. It was a Scarf Legion hyper offense, though. It's pretty good. It gives you some extra speed. Gives you some extra revenge killing as a result. Something that's not as contingent on setup turns to just break. You just tear water and you break. And that also, of course, gives you Ambipom insurance. You can aggressively play it into fake out. You also just outspeed and you tap it on the forehead very, very politely with Wave Crash. Arcanine drops because this mon is doo-doo, poopy water, and there's no reason to use this. Don't know why I would. Give me one moment real quick. Probably didn't need to actually do that, but I wanted to get to our VR real quick. Like, let's look at Arcanine. What's it doing? We have slow burst. So, like, as a breaker, which is what we saw Arcanine in for the last meta where it was good, we got to deal with Lycanroc, Dusk Acceleroc, or even just at CCing you if you've Terra Normaled. Slow bro walls you. Cloyster probably just sets up on you. Diancy, unless you have Iron Head, walls you. Dragalge is at least moderately annoying to break. Flygon still revenges you. Gastrodon is checking you. Infernape's a better offensive fire type. Scarf Crook's revenge killing you. Lucario, well, doesn't really answer you. Scarf Mianchao, though, again, if you Terra, definitely KOs you. If not, it still is annoying. Noivern's a soft check. Quagsire checks you. Rhyperior checks you, Swampert checks you, Tal- Like, there's so many checks to this Pokemon now, just in the upper echelon of the tier. And if I look at, like, defensive Arcanine, I'm just really not too sure what it's checking that I super highly value. Maybe you could pivot on Infernape if you have a resistant Terra? Um, kind of the same with a lot of Pokemon, but that's about it. I feel like it's a terra Alliant wall otherwise, and that's not very help- not very helpful. If you're looking for strong priority, we just have a lot of other methods to get that, so it's not really too valuable for Arc. Bellabolt drops kind of goes into what I talked about with Altaria, where it's just too passive to find consistent usage. It's also kind of awkward because this mon has a lot of mons that just switch in on it, and, you know, they block Toxic, and they also wall Belly Bolt. Mostly think about Dragalge and Vileplume, even Venusaur. And you can run Soak, but, like... Again, these mons are going to be paired with a steel. So it's like, okay, you soaked me. I switched to the steel to block the toxic, and I pivot back to this mon. And guess what? You've done nothing. I don't think it's necessarily a bad mon. I just also struggle to see many things that it, like, actively is a wall to. 
It could soft check a litany of Pokemon just because it's pretty bulky, but that's about it. So Titan drops, maybe a bit of a shocker one too. I, I thought it might, but I wasn't too sold. I think the big thing is it's kind of limited to just snow teams, and those aren't overly common. I remember Shingineer was using a good bit of snow earlier in the meta, and he said he didn't think it was anywhere near as strong once Reggie Drago left. Drago, of course, being an incredible breaker for that kind of team because he got a ton of ice types and general mods that went steals weakened. Well, Reggie Drago so happens to be really good at weakening steals. So, the fall off of those Titan kind of fell off too. Colossal drops, the spawn has not been good in months. Goodbye, good riddance. Delphox dropped. I saw one person very, very, very surprised Delphox dropped. And I'd just like to ask, where were you seeing Delphox used? What gave you the impression this one was going to stay? <laughs> I think some of its people may be basing on what Ryu was using at a point. And I don't disagree that Delphox on paper with Nasty Plot breaks the tier in half. It just also so happens that Delphox gets obliterated by most revenge killers in the tier without having to dedicate a Terra to it. And a lot of the time, the issue I have with Delphox is it's mostly going to be trading KOs. Which is fine. It doesn't mean the Mon is bad. It just is... It could do better, maybe? Dancy is also really common. That's probably one of the better checks to it. Flygon is still everywhere. Even Scarf Me and Shell can potentially give it some headache with knockoff if you don't have the Terra. A lot of the priority issues also still apply to Fox, like Lycanroc and Dusk. First impression from Banded Flygon. Even Lucario's E Speed. Lolan Muck is really good, and you at least will take like one hit. You've got potential Terra Waters or Dragons to deal with Delphox. And since Fox a lot of times are going to be Terra Fairy, you don't care about it pre or post Terra, which is also really helpful. You got mons like Rhyperior, which, I mean, this mon is kind of risky into Fox with how much Psychic will do, but Terra Steel is pretty common on it. So maybe you burn Terra Steel to get it roared out or something, or just to Quake it. Pert's common, and again, if Fox doesn't have the coverage, then Pert's going to be fine to check it at least once. There's a lot of issues for Fox. You know, it's not like AV Brute Bonnet being as common as it is is an issue. Because I will go for my Terra versus you, and you will no longer beat me. <laughs> Dreadnought drops. I think it, this is my best evidence to give you that Dreadnought shouldn't have been banned in the first place. Now, doesn't necessarily follow, because in this meta we have a lot more physically bulky water types that also are just aren't one shot. So they, you know, whether even they're just phasing Dreadnought out or whatnot, there is generally more counterplay. But the issue for Dreadnought has always been. Outside of rain, at least in my opinion. Outside of rain, it's not that good. Rain is not common right now. I'm not going to say it's not good. I just haven't seen a lot of manual rain. I have a team that I've been meaning to use, so maybe I'll give that, you know, give it a shot. But until we see more rain, I don't think Dreadnought will really take off. Because outside of rain, I think Cloyster is just better. Dreadnought is a little faster. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that much stronger. And I generally have better time setting up a Cloister because the physical bulk is just so, so high. You get a bit easier of a time finding those chances to Shell Smash. Whereas a Dreadnought, it's like, oh boy, I hope I can Terra Dark Crunch sweep smile. <laughs> Drifblim drops. This mod hasn't been seen in eons. It doesn't do anything. Duraladon drops. I believe most of that He's just kind of overstaying its welcome. I don't have a lot to say about Dura. This is a mod that I feel like it's probably okay. But in terms of steel types, it's never been able to really fill that role. And if I want a fake steel type, I'm going to use Diancie, which is quite literally a fake steel type. But Diancie's a bit better overall. It's less vulnerable to the type of attacks you want to throw at. Like, the issue with Dura, even with a Violite, the special bulk is still pretty underwhelming. And that's always given it headaches. And then, depending on what set you want to run, none of them really are that threatening. So, like, if you go Iron Press, we have a decent amount of mons that can deal with that. Even things like Talonflame can, like, pivot in, burn you with Wisp, and Draco's not one-shotting them. So they're pretty okay to take that 1v1, beat you down slowly but surely. Same thing with, like, Slowbro, where I can at least, like, pivot around with my Slowbro, make you drop your special attack. And then come out and just beat you down 1v1. And then the steel types that we do have, they're just... I mean, why am I using Dura over them? 
defensively it doesn't offer me anything. And as a setup sweeper, I'm rather going with something like Slowbro if I want a bulky setup sweeper. Even like Diancy or Bulky Mew or Muckalola, I'd go Curse Muck. Why not? Reuniclus? Sure. There's just a lot better options if I want a mon like that. So yeah. Embor drops. Again, it's really just a competition issue. I don't... Embor is... It fills the void of, I'm kind of slow, but I hit really hard. And we've got plenty of those mons in the tier right now. Spec Sylveon, for example. Use that mon. It's really good. Flamingo drops. We have Mianchao. That is just better. Even Infernape. These are just better Scarf Fighters. And it, it, Flamingo kind of fills a similar spot to my Lodic, which you'll see down there. Did drop. Where it's like, I'm sure it stills fine. It's just, why would I keep it in the tier, you know? It's not better than these. Why would I use it? And Florgus drops too. Really haven't seen a lot of Florgus this month. I think Florgus is also fine. I've actually used it a little bit. It still does some stuff okay. I do like over Sylveon that it has Trick. I think that's really valuable in a tier with a lot of scary setup months to have that potential, you know, sweet prevent button. But the meta just isn't really favorable, I don't feel, to Florgus' style of play. We still really haven't seen those wish balances pop off too hard. The few that I see kind of successful have Sylveon on them anyway, so there you go. Um, this is one of the very surprising shifts. I didn't... not think Gastrodon would drop. I think Gastro's quite good. But presumably it dropped due to a Swampert and even Quagsire. There's a little bit of overlap there between what those mons check. And I think Pert is pretty clearly the most active mon of them all, where you have Flip Turn and Knock Off. So you have the free progress button. You've also got the slow pivot, which is just always going to be good on a litany of offense builds. Whereas Quag had a very solid niche on stall to shut down some setup. And then Gastro's mate. I don't know. I don't even want to say Gastro struggled to find like a team that it truly fits on. Because I do think that it's pretty solid on those same kind of builds. Pert will still also get thrown on. Like you'll see Pert on balance as well. I think Gastro still fits well there. I think maybe the issue for it really was just it's not definitively the best. So hey, I mean hey, P you got a good one, Pu. Also, I I really like it alongside like Copperaja having spikes with uh Stealth Rock plus Knock Rage. That's pretty sick. Um, Gligar drops. It's also another example. This one's still okay. We just have so much extra ground type competition now for it with a Rhyperior. Swampert, Gastrodon, Crocodile, Quags, there's just so many options. And Gligar does not stat check the tier like it used to. We went from Sandaconda as the physical attacker, you know, just check of everyone's, to Gligar. And now we've got things like Pert. So, Gligar just kind of fell down the totem pole a bit. Golurk is just Embor, but it is a different type. Gudra, I have not seen this mon in Eons. I don't know what it's supposed to even do. I'm not using it over Dragalge for much of anything. Not using it over Flygon. Flygon's like completely incomparable, but you know, let me cook. <laughs> now using it over Flygon. I really just don't know what Gudra offers me anymore that's like particularly relevant. And I've felt, again, in this meta, I want mons that are a bit more active. It's why, again, kind of back to the Gastron point, you see Pert over Gastra. It's why you see some of it Dragalge over Gudra. Because Dragalge can pivot, I can keep up my momentum. I'm not locked into this like slow grind type of play style that Gudra kind of feels like it is. And then you could argue about offensive Gudra. And I, I, I just don't really feel like it's that great. The speed tier is okay. You know, it's the same as Gallade, so it's not bad. I, it's just one of those prediction reliant wall breakers, so it doesn't really sell me a ton. I think it's an okay mon, but I'd have to really find a reason to use. Grim Snarl drops. It felt pretty okay at the start of the tier, mostly because dark types were super, 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 insert a few more of those, necessary. I, I did like bulk up Grim on hyper offense, but now it's kind of like, all right, <laughs> all right, we move past that. Use use Crocodile even if you want to do something like that, or any of the other dark types, really. But yeah, I mean, Grim doesn't do anything like offensive. I think Crook's just a better offensive dark. I think Muckalola, obviously better defensively. Bonnet's got a good blend. Incineroar, Kind of also a decent blend, although you usually see it more defensively, and even then you don't see a lot of Incineroar. God, I didn't even realize Umbreon's in mid. Wow. Did that drop? No, it didn't. Yeah, Umbreon's dropping to PU. I wouldn't, or at least I wouldn't be shocked if it did. <laughs> but yeah, Grim kind of sucks. Heracross also kind of sucks. Not because it can't break teams, 
but because there's so many mons now that are faster than it and limit it really well. And as a fighting type, I think generally people are happier to use me in Chow as a breaker. You got a lot better sustain with it, with your life orb and regenerator. You got even panic priority, which is cool with fake out. You got knock off just like Hera. You can pivot. Xiao just offers a bit more in one slot. And similarly, Infernape will. Although you don't have that longevity benefit, you're even faster than Xiao is. You've got some extra utility with like Switcheroo. You're just generally more versatile, so there you go. Hitmonlee is a terrain merchant. Terrain's not really used right now, so there you go. Hitmon top is just shit. Inteleon hasn't been good at all this month. There are good water checks everywhere. I mean, look, look, look at her VR, man. Even Slowbro can pivot into an Inteleon because they really haven't been running Dark Pulse, which that that probably is just should have changed by now. You know, Bro can scout out the spec stuff. Trigalgy can still scout. Gastron just checks it. Even like Muckalola is a fine check. Registeel's still a fine check. Salt Vest Reuniclus is a good check. Um, Ripe Kintera, I guess. <laughs> Sylveon's an okay check. There's just a lot more. Brute Bonnet, good check. A lot more things keep it contained. I think Inteleon is still a fine mon, but that's why I dropped. Hello Watch will drop. I haven't really seen a team style that's very good on. And for the fast flying type pivots, definitely seen more success with Noivern and Talon. They're a little bit better defensively, it feels like, which I don't really know how it works, frankly. Talon at least certainly is, and then Noivern just feels like a bit more consistent of an offensive pivot. So there you go. Kingdra drops. Haven't really seen a ton of rain, just like some of the other mon. Not some of the other mons. Um, Dreadnaw, just like we mentioned with Dreadnaw. Haven't really seen a ton of rain. Also haven't really seen a ton of that focus energy stuff, and I feel like that kind of, again, plays into where the meta's at. Where Kingdra is pretty decent in Gen 8 and you, since there's a very specific playstyle that it can counter team very, very well. That playstyle doesn't really exist in current gen, so kind of hurts its chances. Mellow to drop. He's just been absent. I think it's probably okay. It can do a lot of the similar stuff as Monkey Dory, where you just exist as a nice little trick scarfer. And it can limit mons like a lowland muck by just drawing them out and saying, hey, hold this scarf for me, bozo. But he has a breaker. It's not really the same threat. Calm Mind Meloetta is maybe also not really that good anymore because well, a lowland muck's going to check you if you're Calm Mind. And you don't have... Like, you can do Terror Blast Ground. I just feel like people don't like that because it feels like a kind of weird option to go for. And it doesn't really cover you defensively like something like Fairy has in the past or even Steel. But yeah, I think a lot of it for Meloetta has been Psychic type competition. We've had so many different Psychic types throughout this month. From Necrozma to Armor Rouge to Mew to Reuniclus to even Monkey Dory. And a lot of them have, you know, even the ones that are still here, a varying overlap with Meloetta and they just take away from the justification you use it. I think Trick Scarf is definitely the best option. And even then you gotta argue for your use over Monkey. Melodic dropped? How many Melodic have you seen this month? I think my answer is... If I had the over-under set at like 5.5, I'm taking the under. I don't think I've seen more than 5 Melodic. That's really it. I, I, I don't know why I'd use it. Like, what am I using Melodic for over Swampert? Anti-setup? I mean, I could even use Roar on Pert if I need to. Um, longevity is really the only, like, longevity and status absorption, I feel like, is the best justification I can have. And it just doesn't feel like teams need that. There's other alternatives you've got, like, people running, I mean, to get Gastrodon if you need a Scald Absorber. There's plenty of Tox communities. T-Wave is just always going to be inevitable. And I'm not, I'm going to be honest, I don't really care about absorbing a T-Wave with my Melodic. It just means I'm going to get paralyzed to death 20 turns in a row. <laughs> That's all that means. But, yeah. Other water types... Kind of, it's not even really other water types are better. I just don't feel like Melodic has a reason to be used over Swampert, which I guess is other water types, but it's more like other water type. Just one. I don't know. Hell, I'd even say Vileplume's an okay Scald, or not Scald Absorber, technically. I was going to say Stat Absorber, though. Just use Plume. You really need one that badly. You know, Minior. Shell Smash Minior has just not seen usage. People want Torterra or Cloyster. Minior doesn't really do anything particularly unique, so there you go. Mudsdale, similar issue to Gligar, where there's just so many other options now that inevitably the ones lower on the totem pole were always going to kind of fall. And Mudsdale, it's, 
it doesn't do a lot other than exist, where something like Swampert has a lot more to offer. Even Crocodile, if you want to look at offensive options, Flygon. These, like we said, they play a more active role in the game. Mudsdale Sword is just there. You throw it out as a response to your opponent going to some other threat, or you double switch it in. But then when it's there, I mean, it, it, setting Stealth Rock. I'm making the ground shake with my Earthquake. Um, maybe I'm feeling a little frisky that day in my Iron Defense Body Press, but it just doesn't move me. <laughs> pom Pom dropping was very surprising, but admittedly, I haven't really seen Pom Pom outside of the terrain teams at the very beginning of the month, so I guess it makes sense. I just feel like Pom Pom's still good, though it is more reliant now on Hurricane stuff landing. I mean, Terra Grass is an option that we saw actually at the very beginning of the gen. So maybe that can make a comeback? Maybe? <laughs> I'm pretty happy to see the Demon Bird dead and gone, but... Eh, probably is better than the usage indicates. Palmot! There's just better fighting types. The fighting types that don't have to terrestrialize just to keep using um, their primary stab attack. And again, Litany of Ground Types does not make this any easier. You want to double shock into my ground type? Okay. <laughs> It's, again, Palmot's like a fine breaker still. It just use me on Shower Infernape. The best advice I can give you. And Quillfish drops. This is finally Power Creep catching up to it. I'm shocked Quillfish lasted as long as it did. But those tiny buffs that it got with like Barb Barrage, Flip, Turn, Pain Split. They really carried this mon. Good work, Quillfish. Give, give this mon a round of applause. You, you did great. Rotom Heat drops. This is kind of surprising, but also not really. As you're trying to convince me to run Rotom Heat in the tier with Swampert, Quagsire, Gastrodon, Dragalge, um, Noivern. Not really Noivern. Well, I mean, let's go down the list. You wanted me to run Rotom Heat in the tier with Diancie, Dragalge, Flygon, Gastrodon, even Infernape. Um, Muckalola, sure, I could be Rest Talk. Quagsire, Reuniclus, Rhyperior, Swampert. You want to use that on here? In this climate? It's not a bad mon at all. I just think that it's it's pretty hard to find consistent success with it. It's it's very much not a standout option. It, it does not do a ton that you're like, oh my god, I get to use a Rotom Heat today, let's go. Hell, I would argue Rotom Mo in some regards is better. I said it. Rotom Mo, you know that mon that's probably in ZU now? Okay, I'm glad I was wrong. I saw Rotom for a second, but it's just the regular one. It's just what does he do? Nasty Plot stuff's kind of cool, but again, there's just so many mods you need out of the way entirely before you're doing much. Gen generic Pivot Set is Generic Pivot Set, man. Like, okay, I've got 20 other mods that do the same damn roll. No one care. Scrafty Drops. I think Scrafty is still good, but it definitely seems like it just does not win games like it used to. It probably is not helping that Slowbro can Terra Fairy in front of it or even Terra Poison and just beat it. Diancie is still everywhere. Mew commonly is a Terra Fairy option. Um, Alolan Mu again, you got like that just, if I want defensive ground, what or not ground, dark, what am I running? Well, probably a Muck, probably a Brubonnet, even Incineroar maybe. So, a lot of the use case for it's gone to the wayside. If I want to set up fighting type even, I'm probably just running set up Infernape, frankly. And they, I know they don't play the same at all, but... Maybe thinking a little more in the lens of a DD Scrafty. It's hard to contend with like SD me and Shao and SD Infernape at that point. And Screamtail drops. Multiply all of Florgus' issues by 50 and you've got Screamtail. Slowbro Galar. Thankfully, PU can thank us now because we banned Quick Claw and we never unbanned it. So they don't have to worry about that set. I'm not sure if they know whether or not they have to, but we'll assume that they do. Know that uh, yeah, they do know it's banned, so you're welcome. Globro is still a good mon. Like, I, it is a veritably good Pokemon in Inu. Its issue is less that there's competition and more that what the competition is. It is Lord Slow Browington's the third. All the way right here. You're trying to tell me I gotta compete with this bastard and you can't use them both on the same team because of Species Clause. So that, it's pretty hard to justify that over the other. But, I think it's a good mod. It, again, it's another mod that if it rose back to Inu, I'm not necessarily shocked. I think if we ever lose Slowbro, 
then you probably see people try to use Globro again just because Regenerator on a really sturdy fighting check. That's a strong archetype, right? So I think then you'd see a use case for it, but for now it's just, you're gonna have a hard time selling people and using Globro over regular Slowbro. Smeargle dropped. Um, the funny HO lead set is really cool, but there's a lot of options for hyper offense lead and Smeargle's not necessarily stand out. Staraptor, it hasn't been a good wall breaker really much of its tenure in NU at all. God, it went from UUBL to PU. That is disgusting. It's okay, Staraptor. They'll ban you. Probably. Eh, I don't actually know if Staraptor can get banned that quickly. There's a lot of threats here. <laughs> um, Tatsuguri dropped. It is a cool option for beating up on Slowbro. I don't know how much else it does, though. I haven't used really Tatsugiri at all, so I'm not the best person to talk about it. But that's really the end of what I have to say about it. It's a good slow bro abuser, and that's about it. Howdy and Aquatoros falls. This one felt like a bit of a long time coming. Only in that this month felt like it took forever to go by, and that the whole month I didn't see this mon used successfully one time. We have better fighters now, kind of against the issue, but if you want to compare Aquatoros in this meta compared to the last, where it felt like checking this mod with resistances was damn near impossible because we had like one or two Pokemon that did. I will now refer you to Slowbro, Dragalge, Vi not Vileplume, but Vileplume, and Venusaur. We have legit, and even Noivern, we have legitimate options now to just wall it. And so it went from this mod that really could set up and sweep past most teams to a mon that cries when it sees most teams. I've tried to find a good move configuration on it, and I really can't find any that's, like, super satisfying. Because if you want to do bulk up, it's like, what, bulk up? You need a water move, you probably want CC, and then what? What's your last move, Zen Headbutt? Um, it, it's just tough. And then Toxtricity drops, that was another one that shocked me. I, I, I feel like Toxtricity is still very good in, in you, but... I mean, again, maybe it rises to NU in a few months. Keep in mind, this is the last quick shift. We now go back to three-month tiering intervals. Now, it doesn't mean we won't have tier shifts. It's just only going to be drops. But Toxtricity... I mean, it's... I guess Toxtricity is kind of similar to mods like Emborn and Golurk. It's just not nearly as slow as the big thing. But it does still run down a lot of teams. Toxtricity is a mod that's very easy to get mileage with. Because Boom Burst plus Electric Move... Like, Overdrive Boom Burst covers so much of the tier that it's very uncommon to have a game where it just outright does nothing. The only time I could think of that happening is when I ran into Eternally on Ladder, because we both were using CB Swampert a bit, and I absolutely beat the living piss out of him, because I had, like, double ground and a ghost type. Or double ground and a steel type, it was something like that. And he got to have no fun that day, and I honestly think that not only... He didn't, he, you know, he was upset that he lost, but I think he was happy to see a game where Toxtricity did nothing. And yeah, that's our tier shift. There's some ZU stuff too. Um, some of these mods look interesting. Seeing Toxicroak and Passimian and ZU feels really weird, but we'll move on from it. Also, Iron Boulder dropping out of OU. Disgusting. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. Let me know what you're most looking forward to uh, using out of our new drops right here. Personally, I'm going to go for Alligator, but maybe you have a different opinion. Take care, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.